So welcome back. We have been talking about mortals and kings and mortal kings. And we have seen this small database in which there are four persons, Alexander, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates. And there are two kings in our knowledge base. One is Alexander, the other is Zeus. And if we ask a query, is there someone who is mortal and who is a king? Then the program comes back and says, X is Alexander. And it says there are no other such person. If you ask the query with a different order, is there somebody who is a king who is mortal? Then again it comes back and says, yes, Alexander, X is equal to Alexander and again it says there is no other such person. But now let us ask this question is that is there somebody who is not a king and who is mortal? Now you can see that there are three people in our knowledge base who are men but not kings and therefore they are mortal but not kings. So, how can we get that answer from prologue? So, in prologue, we have this notion of negation here. This backslash stands for not and plus means stands for positive. So, in some sense, backslash positive stands for negative. So, you can think of it as not, though it is not the logical not. it is a negation by failure not. That means, we cannot show that it is true. So, if we ask the query, is there someone who is mortal? So, what will the program do? It will look for somebody who is mortal. Then it will go to the second part of the query, which is who is not a king. Now, by the time it comes to this query, we know that x is either Aristotle or Plato or Socrates. Or Alexander for that matter. But Alexander will fail because Alexander is a king. So, the fact that Alexander is not a king will not succeed. But for these three individuals, mortal will succeed and not a king also will succeed. Because it will look, what it will look for is it is, a, is Aristotle a king in the first instance and uh, it will find that no Aristotle is a king cannot be shown. So, it satisfies our query that Aristotle is a mortal and he is not a king. So, it will say yes the answer is Aristotle then it will do the same for Plato and the same for Socrates. But if we say, if we change the goal order, we say is there somebody who is not a king and who is mortal, then very curiously it comes up and says false. Now, that does not logically follow because we know That there are all these people who are not kings and who are mortals. But it is saying that no, this is not true, that there is somebody who is not a king and who is mortal and it is coming back with false. And we will see the reason for that is that this negation cannot handle variables. It can handle if you say is Aristotle a king, is Aristotle not a king, it will say true. If you say is Plato not a king, it will say true. If you if you say if, is Alexander Alexander not a king, it will say false. That is why Alexander does not figure in the answer in the top query. But if you give a constant as an argument to not a king, then it works and it will tell you whether that statement is true or not. But if you give a variable to an argument with a negation below that, then it is will always return false. That is a quirk of uh, prologue and the way it implements negation. So, let us explore a little bit of negation now. So, this is a negation 
loss. So negation of B, B is some goal. So, we use the term goal for predicate interchangeably in prologue they tend to call everything a goal. So, we have goals and sub goals, but everything is a goal. So, in the absence of a negation goal in the body and in the query goal ordering and query does not change the solutions. We have seen that it can tell us that there are three people who are mortal and who are not kings. The location of the negation in the body and the query may change the meaning of the program as we have seen. By meaning of the program, we basically mean what is the set of answers that this program will give us essentially and that is called as a meaning in denotational semantics. And the meaning can change as we have saw, seen in the previous example that if you put the negation negated goal not the king earlier then it was not giving us the correct answer. It has basically changed the set of answers it is going to give. It says there is no one like this uh, which means it has changed the meaning of the program. We have already seen that goal oriented can improve the performance of the program by doing unwarranted search. We saw the example of the American cousin and cousin. You first check whether somebody is a cousin and then you check whether that person is American is much more efficient than first checking whether somebody is an American and then that person is a cousin. So, goal ordering can matter. In first order logic, when a knowledge base does not entail alpha, it does not mean that the knowledge base entails not alpha. That is logical. If you cannot show that something is true, it does not mean that it is false. So, that is an open world assumption. Prologue uses a cold closed world assumption which says that if you cannot show that it is true, then think of it as false or treat it as false. So, prologue can only prove the existence of something, prologue cannot prove the non-existence of something. It can only show that certain things are true essentially. So, it has only two outcomes, one is solved or failed to solve essentially. Negation as failure or negation by failure as we say sometimes, negation by failure assumes that if you cannot show alpha, then alpha is false that not alpha is true, but it is not a logical not, it is a negation by failure not, which of course is logically it does not make sense. So, prologue treats failure as proof of non-existence that if you cannot show that it is true, then it must not be true, that is the basic idea. And thus, a negated goal B returns true when all attempts to solve B fail. Basically. So, you to show that not B is true, you try to show that B is true and if you cannot show that B is true, that means all attempts have failed, then you say that negation of B is true. It is a weak form of negation and was introduced to deal with missing information and you should read it as fail to solve B. So, when you say not B, it really means could not show that B was true. We have already said that it is not equal to the logical not because if you put a not B somewhere, uh, then you will violate the definition of this, this thing. It turns the goal body, not B in the goal body turns the goal clause into a definite clause. So, it will becomes like this. And if it is there in the body, then it is no longer a horn clause. Which is why our example of uh, asking that is there somebody who is not a king who is mortal did not work and said and the program came and said that nobody works and the reason is that the negation of a predicate with only free variables will always return false essentially. With only variables.
So, I had mentioned the cut operator earlier. So, let us look at that. It is a system predicate, it is not a logical predicate. It is produced, it is procedural construct which breaks logic versus control separation a little bit. It prunes a search tree and improves efficiency. We will see how it does that. And negation of failure can be implemented using a cut. So, if you want to define this not p predicate, you can say call p and if you succeed, then you go to this cut, right. If p is true, then you go to the cut and then cut does not do anything. It allows you to move forward to the next one which says fail. Fail is false. So, if p is true, it will return false. If p were to be false, that means you could not show that call p did not succeed, then you would backtrack from there itself and come to the next clause which is not p and not p has been given as a fact to you. So, you will simply say not p. So, this needs a little bit of careful understanding. There are two cases. One is when p is false, one, one is when p can be shown to be true and one is when p cannot shown to be true. If p cannot shown to be true, then we backtrack from here itself because we are not been able to show that p is true and then we go to the next clause here which says that p is not p is true. So, if we cannot show p to be true, we will end up saying not p is true. But if you can show that p is true, which is the second case, we will move forward to the second clause, which is a cut clause, cut uh, operator. Cut operator will not do anything, it will say okay, go ahead and return fail. So, it will return fail. But more interestingly, it says that we have come up with the final answer that you do not go and try the second clause anymore. So, we have shown that not p is false. Now, do not go and try and show it true by some other means. The other means is simply saying that it is true. So, if you think of it little bit carefully about this, what you are saying is that if it is true, then cut will stop it from, if, if p is true, then cut will force you to return false, which is what you want to return because not p is false if p is true, but it will not try to go to the second clause which is saying that no, 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 not p is true. So, if p is true, you will end up only saying that not p is false which is what you want. If p cannot be shown to be true, then you will never reach the cut operator, you will backtrack before that itself and go to the second clause which simply says that t p is false. So, this is how negation by failure can be implemented using this cut operator. So, what we need to understand is this cut operator. So, look at this search tree here. You have some goal to show and you have some three options. So, you have three rules A1, A2, uh, three versions of rules. Okay. So, one version says A1 is true if B1 is true and B2 is true. The second version that is shown on the left branch, then the middle branch shows A1 is true if B3 is true and B4 is true. And the third rule says, which is the rightmost subtree, which says that A1 is true if B5 is true and B6 is true. Okay, so that is the rightmost subtree, it corresponds to this rule essentially. So, there are three things. So, if you were to now run this program, it will just try out all these combinations a1, a2, a3, a4 up to a7 and list out uh, different ways of showing that g is true. That is how normal backward chaining will work or, or normal depth first search on the goal tree will work. But a cut operator changes the structure of the tree essentially. How does this work? We have introduced the cut operator in the second clause and therefore, it is shown up here in the middle subtree. 
So, for, when we are trying to show that goal is true, it will first try the first branch and it will try all combinations and see whether it is true or not. Then it will come to the second branch and to show that A1 is true in the second branch, which is the second rule, you have to first show that B3 is true. So, if you show that B3 is true, let us say we show that A1, A4 is true for B3. That means it has succeeded essentially. The rule says if you have shown that B3 is true, you go past the cut. That means now you go to this side of the search tree. So, you have gone past the cut. But cut says, okay, now that you have gone past this point, you can never backtrack from here essentially. So, cut says that the only solutions that you can now give are in this part of the subtree, where you can show that B4 is true, either by showing that A5 is true or whatever the, the two clauses for A5 are. And, uh, if you can show that it is fine, uh, but you cannot go back and try something else. So, you cannot backtrack from this place that is not allowed essentially. Once you have reached that region, you cannot backtrack from there. So, if you have gone past the cut, you are confined to this subtree. You cannot even go back to the second way of showing that B3 is true, you cannot backtrack from where you were. So, normally you would have shown that B3 is true using some A4, then you would have gone to B4 with some A5, then you might have come back to show some other A4. So, let us call it A4 prime here, uh, but you are not allowed to go back. If you have gone past the cut, you cannot go backward essentially. That is the interpretation of cut essentially. Not only are you confined to this, this part of the subtree will not be accessible to you because you are not allowed to backtrack and try something else for A1. So, remember that there were three rules for A1, uh, the left rule which is the first rule, the middle rule which is in the middle row which has a cut and the right rule which is on the right hand side. If you have gone past the cut, then all your options of showing A1 are confined to this. So, it is a very interesting uh, operator which can be used to control efficiency in, in search. Uh, so, I will stop here for a moment. Uh, for you to think about what cut does uh, by looking at this diagram and we will come back and see how cuts can be useful. So, that will be the last part of prologue that we will look at essentially.